Hey y'all, it's Christian. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I have filmed several variations of this video and decided to film a new one each time because I wanted to let more information come out, give more room for improvement to be made. But it just seems like with time, the situation just continues to worsen. And I think my desire to hold back sometimes comes from a lot of our inklings to protect these schools when in reality, the decisions that they've made or haven't made have directly impacted students in the most harmful ways. First, I want to say that just because I don't directly experience the worst of what a student can experience in these situations, it doesn't mean that it's not an issue that I don't care about. Because obviously it pushes me enough to open up this discussion, to put it on a platform where I know prospective people, um, whether it be students or donors or whatever, I know that they will see stuff like this. It may be view Spellman in a light that it's not typically viewed in. And maybe it's time for that. This week was my first week of classes as a senior at Spelman and I was really hopeful that a tide would turn this year. We're just coming off of a year of such loss, not even just for my class but for everyone. Nobody wants to be in college, especially not a senior in college during a pandemic that just leaves everything in question. Your safety is at risk, your health is at risk, everything is at risk. I really do think that a lot of us were just hoping for something different and I feel like we've received disappointment upon disappointment and I've discussed a few of those on my channel pretty much since we were sent home last year. There have been several crises that have happened just in the Spelman community alone. I haven't even branched out to how all schools in the AUC have just been a mess. <laughs> the most pressing one that is still going on it seems is the housing issue. I did film a whole 17 minute video when it was at its peak. Things have seemed to mellow out now that everyone who's going to be on campus is on campus and everybody who couldn't get housing found a way, hopefully by now. Something that I want to just drive home, something that's always remained consistent is there has been a housing issue. My freshman year, I was in temporary housing. Class of 2022 was one of the largest classes that had been accepted, yet there was still not enough housing to place all of us. I was sharing a game room in LLC2 with four other girls, but I was paying the same rate of housing which makes up a bulk of your expenses at Spelman. I think I was just happy to be there at the time but three years later and seeing all of this happening and it happening worse for some people I realized that it really shouldn't have been that way and it's a trend not just at Spelman but across the AUC where these large freshman class are accepted. There's no guarantee that there will be a place for everybody to sleep, to be, rest peacefully and comfortably and at a worthwhile price. Something that's been so disappointing to come to terms with is how much college is a business when this experience, this Spelman experience, was portrayed as something completely different. It was portrayed to invite us in, to feel like, you know, this is the perfect place. We couldn't see ourselves anywhere else. And then to see the reality that really our main importance is the financial part, like how much money we could bring to the institution. That's been really hard to come to terms with especially as a fourth year senior because you just feel like you've given so much to a school. I've talked about things becoming a person's entire identity but it's impossible to walk through the gates of Spelman and not be touched and not to want to be a part of that legacy. I just don't feel like some of that dedication and love has been reciprocated with a lot of its students. Back to housing there have been several disappointing announcements about who would receive accommodations and everything that's on campus. Around the time when it was announced that the vaccine was going to be a requirement, it wasn't a confirmation, but there was this there was this assumption that wasn't backed up by completely nothing. We would kind of ease back into the norm, however that would look. We were looking at people coming back on campus outside of a few people in the freshman class. We were looking at in-person learning. Once 
we kind of got the vibe that in person was going to be the thing more questions started coming out because a decent housing announcement still hadn't been made the announcement that sparked the backlash train was when a portion of the freshman class would receive on-campus housing there are over 2,000 students at Spelman but they were only prepared to house a small percentage of our student population eventually that plan was rescinded and more people were going to be able to be housed on campus but it still left a significant portion of upperclassmen without housing things like not being able to come to campus if there's not going to be many virtual options that affects whether people are able to show up and finish out this degree there were several email chains there were a bunch of efforts put on by alum and students themselves trying to raise funds to support students who were essentially left homeless there was still going to be a large number of students put in uncomfortable and really dangerous situations if they were forced to move to Atlanta and the worst part of all this chaos was the silence of the college they would say things without saying things we had questions that needed to be answered demands that really could have been met aside from getting the housing situation together just with the classes having in person anything be mandatory during a global pandemic is a hot mess it's dangerous and it's inconsiderate of people who have a genuine fear a rightful fear of this virus what we have been told was that most classes would be in person and the only way that people could exclusively have virtual classes is if they filled out an exemption form and the same thing went for the vaccine but right there lies an issue that has consequences consequences that we've been met with this week a lot of professors were not comfortable with resuming in-person teaching especially since we are in a pandemic that has not been under control we are in a state where the governor doesn't really make the most safe decisions when it comes to this pandemic we're in a city that never shut down so yeah they're not wrong to be concerned plus you have new high school graduates that missed out on a lot of milestones who have most likely been in the house for over a year and have this new sense of freedom i'm not saying that any recklessness that follows that is warranted but it's to be expected already their actions also have consequences there are a lot of dangers that presented itself with an in-person semester that professors saw coming. Obviously there was some pushback and that's probably where the lack of communication stemmed from because there was so much discord happening behind the scenes that you know students weren't privy to. There's always a sense of disorganization in the days approaching first day of classes but it was heightened to a different degree. Some of us didn't know who our professors would be. Some of us didn't know if classes would be virtual. Some of us had our classes dropped. Some of us had to be on the phone with students student accounts and sending emails that went unanswered just to get re-registered in classes so that some of us wouldn't be stuck here another semester or year. There are several problems with viewing students as dollar signs, but it's even worse when that is in the context of a pandemic. I think a lot of us last year understood why we all had to go home. This was March, it was the beginning of the end, basically. There was a lot unknown, and so it really wasn't safe for us to be on one campus all at the same time. And we appreciated Spelman for putting our health first. But I think as more time passed where where, you know the situation wasn't under control something else began to take priority and that was the college's pockets I think one of my main issues with colleges and especially Spillman is that they act like they're so broke they act like they don't receive the funding they do. They act like they don't have the endowment that they have. They don't act like they have the support of a whole community of alum who I know breaks their wallets each year to seemingly keep our gates open. A lot of students ask this question and I've had conversations with alum this summer also. They have the same questions. Where is this money going? I think we're just curious on how this deficit is possible. How do you still not have enough housing? How is the housing housing you do have still not really livable conditions, livable or safe conditions. How are a lot of the problems we have still possible 
with the resources that we do have. Is this disingenuous just need for money constantly when you're not fixing the problems on campus and with your current students? It's ridiculous. And for these issues to just spread across the AUC has just been crazy to watch. Every year, students seem to be in the same crises. Clark Atlanta especially, if you've been watching the news, there were supposed to be dorm renovations when students and parents arrived on campus for move-in day. The buildings weren't livable. They, they weren't ready to house the students that they had accepted, the students that they had taken their enrollment deposit from. What have y'all been doing the entire time that we haven't been on campus? What meetings have y'all had? What discussions have y'all had? Because obviously you weren't prepared. You weren't prepared for all of us to come back in droves like we did. A lot of people are surprised to hear these things about our schools. A lot of people do not expect to see articles about Spelman College, Morehouse College, or Clark Atlanta University. But these are realities that students have to deal with every day. And I think it's beyond trying to protect an image that is just crumbling at this point. There's definitely something that our community is going to have to actively recover from. Who knows how long we'll be in the situation? Who knows when students will start to be accounted for? Who knows? I'm honestly thankful that I'm towards the end of my Spelman journey. We're about to enter a transition period. So many students and faculty can be affected in this period of transition. My peers and I have already experienced a little bit of it. Due to this housing thing, a lot of us are in very expensive apartments in Atlanta because we thought that our classes would be in person. We thought that we would have to commute to campus every day to get to our classes. These were things that we thought of not just because we made it up or we just wanted it to happen. This was presented to us as very feasible things. We didn't have a lot of time to make these decisions like signing leases and moving across the country and moving to a different city. We had two months. I've talked about the untimeliness of these decisions. A lot of people are stuck in this situation. You know, being a senior, I couldn't leave or go anywhere else. I didn't have time to fill out a transfer application, nor would I have wanted to because I'm this far in the game. There's no guarantee if I started somewhere else that I would be able to finish on time by May 2022. No one should have to be in that much of a hard place. No student should constantly have their well-being put in the balance every year, every summer, every couple of weeks before the semester starts. As I've said, I can only hope that things will get better. The most immediate thing is coming out of this pandemic not worse off than we were before. As of right now, our professors don't feel comfortable teaching us in person. I'm just really unsure what my first semester of my senior year will look like. I'm not sure if this semester being in person will even last that long. All I know is that I am going to continue to move forward. I feel like at this point as a student, there is not a lot that shapes me as much. Of course there is disappointment and maybe a little bit of anger but there's just a wisdom and a calmness that comes with making it this far as a Spelmanite. I honestly feel for my Spelman siblings who are new to this, who are surprised by this, who certainly don't deserve any of this but I know that they will be prepared for things that just shouldn't happen to them. That's definitely something that a Spelmanite learns, how to move forward despite many disappointments from unexpected places. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching and until my next video, bye!